Hello and welcome to another Talk About Games. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mike. What do we got today? So we have almost done 50 of these episodes. Isn't that crazy? That's like almost a whole year. Well, also before this, we did uh, a couple other versions of Talk About Games. We used to do one where we had the old set where it was like the wood panel in the background. So we've been doing Talk About Games for a long time, but those were a little different uh, formatted. This is our podcast version version right. of that. I wonder so, what we're going to do next in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so this show's kind of fun. Basically what happens is Mike and I get together every few weeks and we we basically pick games that we want to share with each other. So I bring a game, Mike brings a game. Uh usually I tell everybody about my game. It's kind of like a book club and then Mike tells everybody about his game. Right. And then we just we we get on tangents and things, but that's the basic idea of the show. That's that's what we do. <laughs> and uh, before the show, often, uh, unless we're familiar with it, like if, if it's a game that Ryan's never seen that I've been playing, I show it to him usually beforehand. Or if Ryan's been playing a game and I've never seen it, I'll check it out before the stream. Because some people, are, before we uh, do the podcast, cause I think some people think that we come into this and I have no idea what you're doing or whatever. Usually beforehand, he shows me the games and whatnot so that I, you know, actually have seen the game and all that. So today I'm playing a game that you probably definitely have heard of and it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Radical Rescue. Yeah, I've played that one, so, which, which is the third of the Game Boy which games. Which is the third of the Game Boy games. The first one is Fall of the Foot Clan, mm-hmm. and then what's the second one called? I don't know. like Out of the Sewers or some, yeah, something like I that? Yeah, it has like a manhole on it. Yeah. Back from the Sewers something or something. Something like that. Yeah, I forget, yeah. But this game is totally different from both those games because it's a Metroidvania so I remember. So uh, the other two are fairly straightforward platformers. I remember this third one was more difficult. So so check it out. Yeah. The way this game starts is all the turtles are watching TV in the sewer, like every other game, and then April gets kidnapped. But also Splinter gets kidnapped, Leonardo gets kidnapped, Raph gets kidnapped, and Donatello gets kidnapped. Right. So really, you start with Michelangelo, and you're just like walking through this wooded area, and there's foot soldiers everywhere. Which is an interesting idea, actually, if you know the characters of the turtles, because it's always like, he's like sort of the dumb one. Right. But, you know, he's just as good of a warrior as the rest of them, but like, he's, you know, he's the party dude and he's the he's the, he's the crazy one or whatever, but what if Michelangelo had to like, what if Michelangelo had to come up with the plan? Right. Um, you Because Leonardo's the leader, usually they would rely on Leonardo and if it's not him, they go to Donatello, the tech guy. Right. But it's like, that's a, I think that's a great idea for a game. It's like, uh-oh, Michelangelo's on his own, and now he's got to save the day. So what so, happens? I'm glad you start with Michelangelo, because Michelangelo, because it's a Metroidvania, all the characters have different abilities that allow you to progress. So basically what you're trying to do is you end up... And I highly recommend that if you play this game, you play it with this map in advance. Because the game tells you... Not at all where to go. Okay. Right? And this game's very hard. Wait, wait. I got a qu- Okay, so Ryan's got this printed. I got a thing about maps. So I had recently been playing um, Back to the Future 2 and 3 yeah. on NES. And maybe someday later I'll do an episode about that. But just about maps. So I to figure that game out, you need some kind of map. Yeah. Um, so my question is, you know, this map here... Um, You printed this out. You got this online. I did. So how about using online maps or like a Prima strategy guide or something like that compared to drawing your own map? Because the reason I bring this up is when Radical Rescue was out or games of that era, Game Boy games, NES games, 
you usually didn't have the you didn't we didn't have the internet in 1989 right. 1991 or whatever we didn't have it yeah so we had to draw our own maps so a lot of times on stream now i'm i i do so many things to try to replicate that era of yeah. um you know uh i want my audio to be set up so that it sounds like the room mm -hmm. not the direct capture right because i want you to hear the button clicks or if i'm playing the nes zapper i want you to hear the clicks and I'm playing on a CRT television and all the stuff I try to do to emulate what it was like back then. So I've come to the point now where a lot of times I'm drawing my own maps because that's what we used to do in the 80s. Right. So um, I feel like people don't do that anymore. I feel like once like the strategy guys in, the, in like the 90s, the late 90s, like once it was like Nintendo 64 and PlayStation, people stopped drawing their own maps. You just went online right, and because, got somebody else's map. Because it, prior to the like the Prima strategy guides and stuff like that, you still had like there was stuff. There was Nintendo Power. There was like the VHS tapes, like the how to win or how to beat Nintendo VHS tapes and things like that. But they didn't really give you enough versus like game FAQs. Yeah. Like game FAQs will tell you every, every single thing. thing. Yeah. Not only that, but you know, we're 10, 20 years out from game FAQs yeah. now. Now you just have YouTube where there's video of every single video game ever made played by and somebody who's amazing yeah and then you can just look, watch them do it if you get stuck or whatever right and, yeah and, and that helps a lot like in this game i want to tell you that in my opinion mm -hmm. absent walkthroughs videos maps that sort of thing yeah this game wouldn't be any fun Oh, meaning um, you for would, me. You would want you would want to use like a guide. Yeah, because yeah. when I first started playing this game, you walk you walk in to the start and you're like, okay, well now I go down. You can end up going like different places and and not knowing where to go. And there's no this game doesn't have battery save. What I was trying to say was I feel like people don't like to make their own maps or draw their own maps anymore. Right. Like if you have to draw your own map now for a game, people just aren't going to play it. I don't think And yeah. I, I'm trying to a little bit bring back the idea of like, I know that you can go online and yeah. you can do that, but I try to stay away from that. Like if I really, really have to, maybe I will, but I try to like do it as like old school as I can when I'm playing an old school game. Yeah. If I'm playing something that just came out, that's a little different. I think but it's great that you do that. Because, like, I think back to, like, my first time playing Dracula's Curse or playing, you know, the, the two I always say is Dracula's Curse or Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. Mm -hmm. I think back to playing both those games. And I think about the time and effort I put into those games. Right. Whereas now gaming is a little less meaningful and a little more disposable. You spend less time with games now because when – your parents took you to Toys R Us or KB or any yeah. of that stuff. You come home or Christmas, anything. You get the game and you have it for a while. And like that's your game. Regardless of whether you like the game very much or not, you're going to be playing that game for a while and you're going to come back to it again, again, again. And also, I think you gave games that weren't so great. They might have been a mediocre game. You might have played a lot of that game where now if the game was mediocre, you just move on to another. Yes. And you know what's really hard? That is true of any budget. And here's why. A $100 tablet or a used PC can play almost every game through Wii U in emulation for free. Mm -hmm. That's the, the facts. If you're a kid, you know, when I was a kid, I went online, tried to find... Oh, what can I play? What can I do? What can I do? And, and the fact of the matter is that in this world, you can, with emulation on a shitty tablet or a shitty PC, play like every game through Wii U. And if you have a good PC, you could play a lot of Switch games. Mm -hmm. So the emulation is so good that you could just pop different games in. Yeah. And, and I don't care about, oh, is emulation good? Is it bad? Anything. This is facts. Right. Some kid wants to play a game. You know, you paid $70, you saved your birthday, Christmas, whatever money to get Chrono Trigger or whatever. They can summon Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VII, uh, 
Ninja they Turtles. They can get any of those games. Just download them on the internet. Just download them for, instantly. Instantly, yeah. Rondo of Blood. Rare games that you've never seen before are at your fingertips. So it kind of cheapens everything. Yeah, and I, I feel like maybe the younger generation, because they can do that, you can go on your computer, you can play any game you want. Does it make you care a little bit less? We had to go out to the store... You stand there in the in the aisle and you look at all the boxes. Ooh, what one do I want to buy? And it was like an experience, almost like renting a movie. Yeah. And you're looking at all the box covers and then you bring it home and it might be good, it might not be good. And that that whole thing, it's all gone, lost. The, all those experiences, like that doesn't exist There's anymore. no There's no mystery. There's no wonder to it. Because right now I can watch every single game being played all, all the way yeah. through. Also, they wouldn't even just download the game and play it and try it. They would look it up on YouTube or watch a streamer like me, I guess. Right. Play the game. And then be, and then maybe if they really think it's interesting, maybe then they would try it. Right. But they're going to go to YouTube and just look at footage. Yeah. And, and how many games people are, are people just going to watch them? Like Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was playing it. I was playing it. I got to the point where I was like, you know what? Do I have, do I have more time to get through this? Yeah. And I just watched it. I was just going to bed. I put my headphones on. I'm just watching it. Yeah. It was easier. You know, you, and oh, by the way, you did that Final Fantasy VII remake. There's a lot of these remakes where it'll be like the Dark Souls remakes and yeah. whatever. All these, all these remakes. But the, these companies keep going back, and they'll take a game that's like ten years old or something. Like I heard that they were thinking to do like Red Dead Redemption and remake that and whatever. There's all these games, but they always. I feel like it's sort of a missed opportunity. A lot of times for you have this group of talented people, you're going to put them in a room and instead of creating a new game, you're going to be like, oh, go remake Final Fantasy seven, you know, and maybe it does need a remake. I'm not saying that it doesn't. But at the same time, doesn't that take away one? Isn't that one less new game that we get? Yeah. You know, because let's talk about like what it takes to progress in this game. Yeah, because I think that's important. So what it takes to progress in this game is you have to be damn good at platformers. Mm-hmm. You know, like a game like Symphony of the Night has like a lot of power. Like you get your health back a lot. There's save points everywhere. Like you get super overpowered. This game has none of that. Yeah. You got to get to all these places. You got to get Leonardo and then you got to get uh, Raph and then you got to get Donatello and then you got to get Splinter and then you got to get April. And see how it's like a, like a counterclockwise yeah. rotation? Right. You don't know that. Right. You you're just playing the game and trying to figure it out. You're just playing the game. Yeah. You're like, oh, I got a key. What do I do? In a game like Symphony of the Night, the item that you need would have been right after the boss. In this, the bosses are in different places than the rewards. And Symphony of the Night, you can grind and get like really, really ridiculously like overpowered. There's no right? levels in this. There's a, there's a few health upgrades. Right. But that's it. Right. Also, no continues. There are passwords. Mm-hmm. And the passwords are only after every event. Is it like Zombies Ate My Neighbors to where if you use a password, you get to that point in time if you come back to the game a week later or whatever, but you don't have any of your upgrades, so you might you have well, to restart from the beginning? what it is is or? you 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 are at that point in time, but now I got to go through all the shit. And like every screen is full of enemies. This isn't like Metroid where it's empty. This is like you're playing Ninja Turtles on NES where there's fucking enemies, enemies everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. And you got to backtrack. Yeah. And like there's like how many pizzas are are there on the map? There's like one. <laughs> there's like eight pizzas on the map. Yeah. And you got to fucking find them and that and and you'll be like fighting and yeah. and you'll you'll fuck up and get hit a bunch. Once a pizza's gone, is it gone forever? No. It, it comes back. Yeah. Okay. But you're like going around. It's like, "Oh, now I went over here. Oh, the boss is in the next room." And the the bosses are like Mega Man doors. Mm-hmm. to get to them but you're like fuck now i gotta go all the way back to the last pizza get the pizza come back mm-hmm. oh i fucked up again do it again do it again yeah. and like the the bosses have like easy patterns yeah but it's still it still sucks yeah because you die you're you're dead it's 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 awful i'm getting the impression that you don't like this game I mean, it's fine. It's just old fashioned, yeah. right? I don't like this game in the context of my like. I wish I had the time to enjoy this game. Mm-hmm. 
The other thing is, is like this is the only game we have that's like a late Ninja Turtle game. Yeah. In terms of the characters involved. Because mm-hmm. this is no Bebop Rocksteady Rat King. I mean Shredder's in it. Shredder's the final the sure. last guy. But there's some like deep cuts in this game. Mm-hmm. This is like a you know last wave of toys situation. Who do we got? So I want to show you the first boss. You know, you know, good old good old scratch. They don't use him much. Yeah, he's later. He's definitely later on. Th- yeah. This you're gonna show is not so much later on, but that that is for right. sure. Look at that box art. Sh- show that box art to the camera. Yeah. That's definitely like later. So yeah, good old scratch here. Like that's like pretty, pretty late on, right? So you got scratch, and you got to kill scratch to get Leo. Well, to get the key to open the locked door that Leo's in. So you walk by. You could go through the whole level, and you get to Leo, but you didn't kill scratch yet. So, oh. so screw you, you know, you got to go back, you know, and then the, the way they do the power ups in this game is like you get Leo. Now you can break boxes. Mm. You get Raph. Now he can go in his shell and go in small spaces. You get Donatello. Now you can do like the wall climb, you know, so you're like, so they all have unique abilities. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Well, that's cool. So after you do that, then you're like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get Raph, right? So you fight this guy. He's in the Manhattan Project. Do you know this that, guy's I, name? Is that, uh, that's, it, well, give me a second, that's either Dirtbag? Yes. Is, is it Dirtbag? Yeah. Okay. So this is Dirtbag. You get, you yeah. got Dirtbag. Man, these toys are great. This is actually from a Transformers website. But it's they have like a little section and they have like these great like high res turtle pictures on them. So that's Dirtbag. So you fight Dirtbag and you get Raph. And then you fight... One of the Triceratons. You fight a tri- Triceraton. Mm. And for, and he's cool. Like, look at these guns. Like, the Playmates toys were awesome. Oh, they were fantastic. And uh, I color? always had a special fondness for the art on the boxes. Yeah. Like, I don't know who did that art, but it was it was really top tier. So you got, you got Triceraton here. And that's who you fight to get Donatello. Okay. And then... This guy, I don't think I know. At that point, you have to get Splinter. Yeah. And you have to fight Scale Tail. Oh, Scale Tail. That's right. I never so, had that figure. So this is like a super late figure. And what I like about Scale Tail is the hinged tail. This dude almost looks like one of the, uh, especially with that arm, looks yeah. like one of the He-Man, like King, yeah. King Hiss and all that, yeah. like like that shit. That's funny. This this is a character you don't see. Yeah, I don't think this character's even in that fan um, rescue wow. palooza. Like I don't remember him. Like this, that's a deep fucking cut right there. Wow. Yeah. So so that's scale tail. So you fight them. You get splinter. You're getting key cards. You're going. At the end, you fight a shredder, mm-hmm. and then you open the door, and April's in there, and then it's the credits. And that's the game, and it. I mean, is, what do you want? It is a Game Boy Metroidvania with no saves. That is brutally hard, but is very faithful to what Ninja Turtles are. Mm-hmm. And it's got characters from the toy line. It's, I mean, a lot of like the rooms are like samey because it's black and white. It's like, oh, I'm going down another cave hallway. Right. Oh, I'm going down. That's the worst part. This might not be a bad idea. If they want to do another Ninja Turtles game, why don't you do a semi remake of this? But make like basically what I'm saying is make a new Ninja Turtle Metroidvania. Yeah, that, it would it would be really good. People would like like that. if this game had modern sensibilities. I think a modern audience would like love this game. No, you know what you want? You want Timothy Roguelike, right? That'd be cool. There's a lot of things you could do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I definitely think that we should be done. With TMNT 2D beat 'em ups. I'm so over the beat 'em ups. Like, I think that we've seen what that is. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think the last beat 'em up that I truly, really enjoyed, like is the. Like the Shredder's Revenge is fine, but I liked um, Streets of Rage more. Yeah. I really like Streets of Rage well, because they tried to do something different with the art style. It yeah. wasn't just. The same the pixel, thing yeah. again, um, but but yeah, I mean, this game is so flawed. This game is a late Game Boy title. It's like, like I'm not against this, 
but you should not spend a hundred plus dollars for a cartridge. This is not worth a hundred plus dollars. Put it on EverDrive. Yeah, I I own the cartridge. I bought the cartridge for this episode, mm-hmm. and I, I played it on the analog, and I had problems. To be totally honest, yeah, I had problems with sound. I had problems with the analog dock, like disconnecting. I know you used that before for a previous episode, the Kirby one, right? Yeah, with so Kirby, with, with Kirby, it was it was super tight, super fine. This game crashed twice when I was playing it. That's weird. Off the cartridge. Now I don't know if I have a bad cartridge. Possible. Right. Right. Because people selling these, it's worth a lot of money. So you would sell any. Anyone you have. Anyone you have. Even if it's not great, right? Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I can't speak to whether it was the hardware or anything, but it was It was kind of, it kind of sucks when it crashes. So would you not recommend this game to most people? I mean, I play it on an emulator, play it on an EverDrive just to see what it's like. Right. Because this is four years before Symphony of the Night. Mm. I, re- I read a review where... you. A lot of the people who worked on Symphony of the Night worked on this game first. Yeah. So, you know, and it, it was it was a great read. I, I forget. It was from uh, viz.com. I read the review, and it was talking about this guy worked on this, and this guy worked on that. And um, then they went on and made Symphony of the Night. Viz, it, that's not the a voice acting. Uh, no, I don't know what it is. Yeah. It was like a message uh, okay, right. I was searching yeah. around, but like, so I mean, I I played Radical Re- Radical Rescue is the name of it, right? Yeah. So I played it um my on my own before I started streaming like a really long time ago, and I remember making it. I think I did get to the, like the first. I might have got the first turtle or something, but like I got like probably 30 40 percent in, and yeah. like I just stopped. I wasn't doing it for a stream, so I can say that like not streaming wise like just on my own i gave up playing so this. so i'll tell you my tolerance was i got leo i got raf and then i skipped around in the different passwords to see how the other turtles were yeah and then i went to the last password i fought shredder yeah and that's all i did yeah so i don't blame you yeah. it took me hours hours of dying to get raf yeah and i was like done yeah you know, I I was I was done. Yeah. You know, because it's like I don't know. When I first started playing, I was like, "Yeah, this is great." It's it's interesting how your opinion of a game can change as time goes on. There's another third in the trilogy of Ninja Turtle games, which is the Manhattan Project yeah, on NES, which is a really fucking hard game. Yeah, and for to beat that game legitimately, it's very particular how you have to beat like Shredder at the end. Um, that was up there. With, you know, the people talk about hard NES games, right? Manhattan Project is very high up there, but. I just want to throw out one of the real hardest NES games I think I've beaten that nobody ever talks about that's a hard NES game is the fucking Jetsons. Yeah. That shit. <laughs> Dude, that game is like so hard, but nobody will ever say that. It's always yeah. like, oh, it's Battletoads and Silver Surfer and, uh, you know, whatever, yeah. you, you know, Castlevania you know, 3. You know, it's funny. I, I kind of feel bad about this. I bought, I bought Jetsons off of Pat. Yeah. For $30. Oh, now it's expensive. It's yeah. really expensive. Yeah. And I've never played it. It's just like sitting you in a bin of yeah. NES games. But I remember I went to I went to the convention. I'm like, hey, Pat, what's what's this Jetsons cost? Yeah. He's like, oh, like $30. I'm like, here you go. Yeah, but you bought it when it probably did cost $30. Oh, it wasn't, like, it wasn't much more. It might, yeah. He might have gave me like, it might have been like 50 Right. You know, so he gave me a deal. Yeah. But it wasn't. But he didn't know a couple years later it's going to be. That's just what happens. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The the best way to collect video games is start early. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. That's the thing. Start collecting in 2001. Like, like right now, you should be buying <laughs> Xbox 3. So you should be going to the flea market and buying Xbox 360 and PS3 games. Wii. And Wii games. 3DS. Yeah. Like that shit, that yeah. era. Because they're like you go and they have like tables of the shit and the sun's coming down. Yeah. And you're like, 
what's all this? Yeah. He's like, oh, like three dollars a piece. I really wonder if it's going to end up like we are now. Like, there's going to be an, another group of podcasters sitting yeah. there in twenty years, and they're like, oh, that 3ds game or whatever, or that you know that it's we. I mean, we talk about 3ds and Wii games too, but like they are younger than us, so they right. like that's what they we grew up with, like NES and stuff. So. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. Or is this all gonna just fizzle away? We talk about the bubble bursting and all this crap. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, I think that my kids won't remember any game too well, right? But, yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Like, like my son plays Farm Simulator every night. He plays Farm Simulator. He plays Gran Turismo. Mm-hmm. He plays uh, Forza. Horizon, and I find that most kids will play like Minecraft, Fortnite, that yeah. kind of stuff. So they have like their big games, but you know, yeah, he bounced off of Fortnite. He was big in the Fortnite for a couple months, and then he's like, "I'm done with it." Yeah, yeah. But I, where's their like TNC Surf design? Like, like deep cut titles. They don't do that. No, you know I don't what think. he plays? I have one of those little handheld Galagas, and it's sitting on my nightstand. And he comes up to me and he's like, "Dad, can I, can I play?" Yeah, but they do that because you're there. Well, I mean, he helped me fix 37 arcade machines. But but I'm saying that's your situation. I yeah. think most kids probably aren't right. have that situation. Right. You do a retro video game show. Yeah. You know? Right. I think he has an appreciation for the time we spend together on the retro games. I don't think that he'll be nostalgic for Galga or anything in the same way that I am. But he loves Pac-Man. Like mm-hmm. he loves like the idea of Pac-Man and the hardware and that. Yeah, right. But it's not a video game to him. It's a cabinet and a thing he did with his dad. You know, yeah. he's gonna love Which pa- isn't a bad thing. He's gonna love Pac-Man because we worked on it together. Right. Not because he thinks the gameplay is amazing. Right. Right? Which is weird. Yeah. You know, it's all weird. Because I look I look back on games that I played as a kid, like like games we mentioned this episode, Manhattan Project. Like Manhattan Project's a game I never beat, mm-hmm. but I played it hours and hours and hours. And I don't remember, like I remember like surfing, you like mm-hmm. surfing and stuff. But what I remember about that game, nothing to do with the gameplay. I remember my friend had an enclosed patio and it had like AstroTurf on it. And I remember going swimming and I remember laying on the AstroTurf and he had like a little like 18 inch TV sitting on the AstroTurf and we played that game a ton. Mm -hmm. And that feeling is worth way more than like, oh, this is how you beat this boss. Isn't it funny how the the mind remembers? See – I spend all these days like streaming or like days where I spend like editing. Like mm-hmm. I spent all those years editing Monster Madness, right? right? When I edited like Creep Show, I don't know what was going on that day, but I can tell you where I was when I went out somewhere in the world. Yeah. Like, oh, that day in the 80s when I was at the mall. Like, I remember that still, and I'll probably always will until the day I die. You know what I mean? But like, oh, that day I sat in front of the computer and I looked at. Um, Twitter, you're not going to remember that when you're I, 90. Uh, it's w- You're wasting your life on the social media shit. And I think you're wasting your life probably obsessing over the games. Like the individual like strats or the individual like it's fine if you do. Right. Right. But I could tell you that there's no video game yeah. that is as good as that memory. Yeah. Right. No, there, I agree. There's none. Yeah. I can tell you. So I do. I, I, you know, I stream so much. I'm, I'm aware. I'm always streaming. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you that it's absolutely a fucking waste. <laughs> it's absolutely a <laughs> fucking waste. Um, I have fun doing it. I mean, it's fun. The thing about it is it's fun in the moment. I love doing it. And I, I get that like quick dopamine rush yeah, yeah. but it's not a thing that i'm probably gonna remember that's why i record it yeah because i'll never because i don't remember it and people say oh do you what wh- do, remember doing uh castlevania no whip or whatever stuff like that i'm like did i do that or didn't i do that i don't know I, let me go check the video oh i did do it yeah you know but i don't remember it but it's that's what it's like so i have fun in the moment and it's it is worth doing to me in that moment but to, but i don't remember it later you know, yeah. so it's kind of like, 
it worth it, not worth it, you know? Wow. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, I, I think that you should be making memories of games like I did when I played with my friends after swimming or like my son did when he played Galga mm-hmm. working on it. Like, I think that that's like a good way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's Ninja Turtles three. It's all right. It's a video game. I always remember you being at my house a long time ago and us playing Daydream and Davy together. Yeah, yeah. But I remember that because I was with you. If yeah. I was sitting there by myself playing it, I wouldn't remember it. Yeah, I remember, you know, a few times I went over to your house and, and one of the cool times was you had the title cards sitting in a pile mm. for the nerd. Mm-hmm. They were just in a pile. And I'm like, hey, man, um, wow, this is so cool. This is all these. And I'm like, I'm going to get these framed. And they've been in my in the hallway of the office for ten yeah. years. Well, I would draw them, and then at some point later, I'd, I'd like give them to fans, or yeah. sell them to fans, or print them up, print them up, or whatever. But like when I was actually just sitting and drawing them, like what else was I gonna do? I had them sitting in a pile. Yeah, yeah I draw them on bris- Bristol board paper at, with pencil and I ink it in, and then yeah, then then they were just sit there I'll, for a long time. I'll say that hundreds of people have enjoyed those title cards because they're in that hallway. Yeah. You know, everyone comes in. I was like, yeah, Mike drew these. This is from this episode. And then I tell all the stories about them all. You want to do that? Let's th- let's talk about the title cards real quick. Yeah. So the AVGN title cards. Um, <laughs> so people are still, I still get that question. Like, why don't you do these title cards anymore? Or why did you stop doing right. the title cards? Now I've answered this before, but I haven't talked about it on the podcast. So quickly, basically, like, there's been all these episodes now of the show, uh, over 100, I think, where I stopped doing it at episode 100. So the, yeah. now there's been all these episodes where there has not been a title card. Um, I don't really – like the show clearly doesn't need it. It continued on. Right. And I felt that the show just didn't need it. Right. It's like not necessary. And it took me um, several days to draw it, ink it, and then I had to take it and I had to color it. I When I'm drawing – so I don't like – Doing the computer coloring, I don't find it very fun. I do like doing the physical, like just to draw it and ink it. Like I like that process. Yeah. Once it gets to the part where I gotta color it in on in Photoshop, like I hate sitting there doing that part. Um, so I mean, I do like to draw and everything. And then the other thing is, so when you watch the episode, it's on screen for like two seconds. That took me like th- days, or possibly like later on, I started trying to draw them better. You know, it was like, oh shit, a million people is gonna watch this. I better like make this halfway decent, right? Because when we first started doing it, I was like, nobody's watching this stupid show. Yeah, you know. So I just draw this crappy drawing and throw it in there. So the early title cards like really bad art, right? Because I was just doing it like as a joke, you know. Didn't not really knowing like oh shit like a lot of people let me make these better. So I gradually progressively yeah. made them better as I started to realize, shit. All these people are looking at this. It just wasn't the thing that was important to me. And then and then I realized that it was important. And then I started to try to like make them better. But um, meaning it was important because I knew a lot of people were looking at it. But right. it was never really important to me. I thought it was not necessary to the episode. Had really not, like this. Oh, a, this drawing pops up. And but it took me several days. And then it's on the screen for two seconds. And back in those days, you also have to remember before. Episode one hundred. It's also like 480p. It was 480p. A. So I would do, I would put all this detail in, and then it would be in the episode. I think the final uh, th- thing for me was like I spent like a week like drawing one of those things, all this detail, and then it goes online, and it's like it's all pixelated and looks like shit, and I'm like, you don't see any of the detail. Yeah. So I know that now I could do it, and it's all HD and whatever, but like I said, it's not necessary to the episode. It's right. stupid. So the two that are upstairs that I think are the best, and I, I frame them all with like museum glass, like the best yeah. possible, you know, because I know a lot of people care about them. Um, Rod the robot. Mm-hmm. So I have episode one hundred and Sword Quest. Yeah, Sword Quest has a million little. Uh, it's because I like the Carl Barks. Like like the piles of money, like a money bin. Yeah, I wanted to do like uh, I I like to when I was a kid, I started learning to draw from like the uh, Donald Duck comics and yeah. stuff like that. I would have a Donald Duck comic, and then I had a piece of paper, and I would try to redraw panels and whatever because I like was obsessed with those comics. Yeah, so that's how I like gradually like learned to draw. 
by like you could that's a good way to learn to draw is like if you like x-men or something have the x-men comic then have a piece of paper and just try don't to, trace it don't try tra- and draw yeah it. try to redraw or you could trace you could trace it to kind of, if you're like you know just starting out and like yeah. be like you know get the idea of what to do but then try to draw it without tracing it you yeah. know that kind of thing i want to say one more thing about the title cards so also I was editing Monster Madness at the time, yeah. and I started editing James and Mike Mondays when we started doing that. And like, I'm e- I'm editing all these videos, and then plus I also had to draw these title cards. It's like I have other shit to do. It's like, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a Monster Madness episode or a, a like a, one of the Let's Plays or whatever? We had these Let's Plays, like you know, get a right. hundred thousand views or something. I'm working on that. I don't have time to spend five days drawing a title card that's going to appear for one second that people are going to be like, oh boy, good title card, and then just quote the right. episode. Like, it just wasn't, it was stupid. Yeah, because... Yeah. Like, 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 I think it was good. I think it was I good. Know the f- and I appreciate it. I know the fans liked it, but for me, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah. Anyway, so I got to anyway, get to my game. So let's talk about Mike's game. What do you have? So my game... My game, my game is I just turned into Kirk Cameron, uh, <laughs> Werewolf: The Last Warrior. That's the yellow game. That is the yellow. I've been game. saying it all week. I, he's like, I'm like, Yo, Mike, what games you have? And he's like, Oh, I got Werewolf yeah. and this and that. I'm like, That's the yellow. You're one. not wrong though. So I rented that. So I rented that game, and I think from what I remember, this is me from what I remember as a kid. This game is half decent. It's not the best, but it's far from the worst. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It, basically, it's a mixed bag. It's got positives and it's got negatives. Right. Uh, but speaking of that cover, though. So, you're not wrong. And when I'm streaming, I'll have the the video of me. And then I usually have the box art. Yeah. And then, like, I'll say Mike Matei Live, right? And then it's the game. So I bring up the box art for the werewolf thing, and I was uh. like, "Whoa!" Because <laughs> it's so vi- when you have it on a monitor, yeah. that it, it's not like you're li- like see the yellow of the kaboom thing. That's not that's not this. That's not the werewolf yellow. Right. The where I don't know how that yellow is made. It's you know what it's similar to. Mm. It's almost as vibrant as if you looked into the sun. Right. If you look directly into this, don't look directly into the sun, but if you did. That's half as vibrant as that cover is. <laughs> right. So anyway, I don't like, even know how dude, they made I wonder it. If that, I wonder if there was a meeting for them and they're like, yo, we got this werewolf game. How are we going to get people to like pick it off the shelf? And they're like, yo, we're going to make it as yellow as freaking possible. Dude, you like walk into like Toys R Us and you're like, what's that game? And like, cause you, it, <laughs> you're like, you're, you're at the front door. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, what's that game back there? Yeah. Right? Anyway. Uh, they're so, still talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So... The game itself, uh, I think this is a game that, uh, you talked about renting it, uh, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of people rented it or maybe owned it. People are very, people have been talking about this game for years. Play yeah. Werewolf the Last Warrior, play it, play it, play it. And I've, I've like tried it here and there, but I never like sat down and like really play it. So it's one of those games kind of like little nemo or like willow yeah where i never really quite understand what people's obsession with it is where there's good things about it but i just think it's something that people are nostalgic for because they might have rented it but i think the problem is a lot of people have that memory of oh i rented that game oh yeah that's that cool werewolf game or whatever right but they don't really remember it like they don't remember what level five is. I got you know? two more things. You can jump really high in it. Yes. And the slash when you're when you're in the air is like he like it's, kinda it's yeah. like kind of badly drawn. It's bad. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> so I want to talk about the good things about the yeah. game though, because there are good things. The yeah. music's pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of like cutscenes and all that, but it's like the old NES style cutscenes. The cutscenes are not bad. The, they're pretty cool. When like when he transforms, you get the little um, yeah. There's two. There's W's that are for werewolf. And there's a blue W and there's a red W. The blue W will turn you back into a human, and if you are a human already and you get another blue W, it, it'll like take your energy away or probably kill you. Really. The red W turns you into the werewolf, and. The first time that happens, there's like a cutscene thing that happens, and it's this cool thing where you where it's a, an animation, and we should show it on screen here. Uh, that 
uh, shows him turning into the werewolf or transforming into a werewolf, and it looks really cool. That's a good thing about the game. The idea of playing an NES game as a werewolf is a really cool idea, and I yeah. think that's another thing about the game that people look fondly oh yeah that cool werewolf game it's like yeah that's a great idea i love that idea um the first couple like levels are like okay like the first level you just you go through it there's enemies you slash at stuff he, he's got this thing that he can do he can like grab onto poles yeah, above yeah. and like climb and shit and that's all cool and good it's fine um, you get to you get to the uh, first boss. He's like this green sort of slime guy, right? And you just you just attack him, and then he splits apart, and he turns into balls, and he goes all over the screen. And what you're supposed to do if you hit A and B together, the werewolf will start doing backflips. And when you do backflips, you can backflip through enemies and projectiles and things like that. There's a part later in the game where there's like lightning coming down. If you're back if you back backflip, you can like avoid all that. It's like a it's like a dodge kind of. Right. Um there's all that. That's all fine. I have a question. Yeah. Isn't there like a white werewolf? So okay, I'm I'm gonna get into that. Okay. So there's also orbs. Okay. So that's one of the things that you pick up in the game. It's like an item. Yeah. You get these little orbs and they're it's your anger meter. So as your anger as you get more orbs, your anger meter goes up. There's five orbs that you can get. And if you get that fifth orb, then your werewolf uh he turns like golden. Sometimes there's like another orb and you'll turn like gray. You the werewolf can turn like different colors. But um Basically, uh, I think you'll get more powerful. There's essentially. Like a yellow one too. Is yeah. that the golden? Yeah, he'll like he'll turn like yeah. golden. Uh, so you can like you can become more powerful with these different like I, I think that's what they're called. They're they're like anger orbs, and that's like I think it's like your anger meter or whatever. And as he gets more angry, he becomes more powerful and all that. So th- that's like a thing. But the problem with it is when you get it, you get that fifth one. It's like timed. You know when you're playing Castlevania and you get the jar. Yeah, and then doo, 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 what's the problem with the jar? You're talking about the not the stopwatch. You're talking about there's like, the, there's like a jar that you get like once or twice in the game, and okay. it, it makes you inv- invisible and, right. and invincible. Oh yeah, yeah. The problem is like, why would you use it there? And yeah, the, and the thing exactly, but and also, but it lasts like three seconds, and yeah. then it's gone. Or got another one for you, double dragon. You get a weapon, like Linda. You punch Linda, yeah. and she drops the whip, and you grab the whip. What's the problem? The minute that Linda's dead, the whip disappears. You get it for like two seconds. Yeah. it's So it's the same thing. When you finally get that fifth orb, you you turn into the werewolf for like ten, not even t- probably 10 seconds or something. It's like so short of a time. You know how long it takes you to collect those five orbs? It's a long time to get the five orbs. You finally get it. Three seconds later, your power is completely gone. The payoff is not worth it. Not even close. It's yeah. stupid. You know what's funny? As a kid playing that game, because that's the only experience I have with it, when I got the yellow wolf or the white wolf, I was like, whoa, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, you know? so you might remember that feeling like, yeah. oh, yeah, he turns into the more para- powerful werewolf. That's cool. But then when, like, if you're trying to, because like, I'm trying to beat the game, yeah. you know, so I'm like, going through, it's like, you're like, but why doesn't this last more? I need that. I don't know. So. Yeah, that's that's my complaint. I've been playing the Galga uh, mobile game. <laughs> what's the, Galga, the complaint? Oh, what's it called? Galga Assault. I got to yeah. see what the game's called. So I've been playing it lately, and I want to get the title of it because this is a good game, and you should play it. And I might even do it on the show one day. It's called Galga Wars Plus. Okay. And in it, you control it by moving your finger, like, to dodge the bullets. Right. And you're just shooting the whole time. Right. So the only controls are you hold the phone, and you fly around. And dodge stuff, and it's shooting. But if you take your finger off, it pauses. Oh, that's good. Isn't that cool? Yeah. The problem is, is... In, in Galia, you know, you get the second ship or you get a power up in it. The the second ship, when you go to the next world, it flies away. Oh, you should keep it. You should keep it. Until you get hit. Right. Yeah. And the other thing that's cool about it is you're, well, I, I'll talk about it on the show one day. Okay. Well, but we'll get that. Right. The, the point is that the power ups in it don't last long at all. 
and it's a pain because you get a cool power up like missiles or something and it just goes away. Yeah. 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 And I hate that. That makes sense. So, I mean, that could be a whole v- a video one day. We'll do a Patreon feature. Weapons that don't last long enough with yeah. Mike and Ryan. <laughs> yeah, Breath of the Wild, everything. No, There you okay. go. The, the breaking. The, yeah, yeah right. sure. Exactly. Um, I saw somebody was joking the other day. They were like, uh, Breath of the Wild 2, the weapons will break twice as fast. You know, it's or stuff yeah. like that. But anyway, so the werewolf. Um, so here's something. So, oh, my God. We got to talk about the problems. Okay. This game has problems. This game's had a bunch of problems. So yeah. the people that designed this game did not know the difference between a continue and a life. So you get one ups in the game. Yeah. When you get the one up, you die. And then you go back to the beginning of the stage. When you go back to the beginning of the stage, you, you're essentially those, those one ups are a continue. It's yeah. not really a life because when you restart the stage, like at the beginning of every stage, there's a like an old man and he talks to you and like a cutscene plays. So every time you die, you have to watch like this cutscene, which gets really aggravating because it's like, I've already seen this. Why are we showing this again? You can't skip it. It's showing it again because the game is saying this is a new continue, but it shouldn't be a new continue because you only died. You're just starting the level over. It should not do that. Okay. On, on top of that, when it, when you get total game over, you run out of all your continues, a screen comes up and it says continue and end. And it, it's locked on end because you ran out of your continues. So you have to hit the button. You have to hit start or A or whatever it is. And then that takes you back to the title screen. So... That's another confirmation that they were dumb and didn't know the... And there's no way to ever hit continue because the game's broken. Why, why would it show continue if it's only on end? Yeah. You ha- you can only hit end. So when you run out of continues, what should happen is the game just ends and it goes to the title screen. There's no reason to have to hit start on end. Right. They're like punishing you kind of like, oh, you died. Now now you have to hit a button to get back to the title <laughs> screen. It's stupid. Yeah. It's really stupid. Um, what else is bad about this game? So what else is bad is that you get uh, to – the worst thing it, uh, about it is you get to the fourth level. Okay. And this is the woods. I never got to the fourth level. And, you know, I mean there's uh, there's other bad things. Too. Like the third level I think it is where it's like this sort of construction yard and there's these – uh, beams, you know, and you're you're the werewolf and you're climbing the things, which is kind of a cool idea. But um, as you're you climb the thing, and then you get to the top, and then there's another beam, and then you got to jump to the next yeah. beam. When you go to jump and you go to grab onto the next one, the controls aren't very good. It's not like Ninja Gaiden where you can like do, 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 jump back and forth and jump up the wall right. real quick. Like that's good, like wall climbing, wall jumping. This game. You go to jump onto the wall and you're like, you have to hit the button like 10 times to get them to grab on. Yeah. It's like wonky and, and bad. You know you're just fucked. You just fall and die. Yeah. And it's just bad. Um, that's something that's real bad. Um, anyway, so you get to the fourth level and it's the woods. And now this is where the game goes from like, eh, like it's like, cause there's a lot of NES games that like are flawed, but they're still like, okay. Now, now, we're, now you go into this shit category where you're like, okay, this fucking sucks now. Right. Because now you got to do a bunch of this platforming where there's, okay, think about Mario 2. You know, the log that appears at the top of the waterfall yeah. and then it goes down. It's same exact thing as that. So the log appears and it goes down. So you're like, all right, when the log comes, I'm going to jump over onto the log and then I'm going to jump again to get off of it and he, but here's what happens you go ahead okay i'm gonna i'm gonna derail you so i've been playing a lot of frogger lately yeah sorry <laughs> the collision detection in that game fucking sucks and yeah. i'm so mad oh the arcade frogger yeah like the logs going by and you hit up and it's like oh just kidding yeah. like if you are off by like the smallest amount it is so annoying it makes me so mad well, some uh, are quite a few old arcade games like that. Um, 
the, I guess you can call it collision detection or whatever. But I just think about like going up the ladders and ghosts and goblins or that struggle to try. You're playing yeah. like Donkey Kong and you're trying to like get up the ladder and like won't go and all that shit. And then I play Donut Dodo and it's like so fucking tight yeah. and fast and snappy. And you're like, I, this is how I had it to walk be. away. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I had to like cool down. You, you These companies want to remake stuff. Like re- yeah. remake, you know, uh, I, I was like, fuck these logs, yeah. fuck these frogs, Fro- I'm done. The frogger, kangaroo a little bit has that problem. Yeah. Like you're trying to like go up the ladders or you're trying to like make the jump and you're like, Ugh. yeah. the controls, like it, it's it's a good idea of a game, but the controls just need a little work, Yeah, you know? Oh, it's rough. But okay, so this level, you're jumping from log to log. When you jump onto the log, the fish pop up. Okay. When the fish pop up, if they touch you, the werewolf falls into the water and you die. And then it goes to the, then it goes continue. Then you start the level over. And then the cutscene comes up because the cutscene has to play every time. You're trying to skip the cutscene and get through the cutscene. And then, okay, now I'm playing again. You go through, you make it to the log again. Now I'm at the log. All right, I'm going to make the jump. You go to make the jump, the fish comes up, it knocks you into the water. Like knock back, like Castlevania, knocks you into the water. You're, yeah. like, you're like, all right, I'm going to try this again cutscene plays you're like fucking cutscene again all right gonna do this again make it to the log again you're like all right i know the fish is coming the werewolf can do two different types of jumps he can do a normal jump and then if you push like up with the button too he can do like the spin yeah, jump. yeah the spin jump so you get to the top screen you do like the spin jump you go across and you can attack too as you jump across you attack and if you're lucky you can hit the fish at the same time, as, you, as you're landing on the log, you hit the fish, you land on the log, you're like, I'm good. I made it to the log. Then you jump off, and then like three more fish come up, and those hit you, and you fall back in. Oh, that's awful. So you keep doing this over and over. It's limited lives. So if you run out of lives, you go all the way back to the beginning of the game. But first, it has to say continue and end, and then you have to select end to start the whole game from the beginning. Sweet. So you want to get through this level. You have to literally make it all the way to this level on you get like five lives continues to do this yeah i've made it there with like four or five lives i'm like i got all my lives to get through this fucking stage the jumping controls are like not very good so and the chat tried to help me come up with ideas they're like have you tried downgrading to the human because maybe the human can swim in the water and i was like oh that'd be crazy oh shit so i get the blue w yeah. He turns into the human. I'm like, all right, here we go. Jump on the thing, jump on the thing. All right, I'm going to try to jump on the logs anyway, but if I get knocked in, he's the human, so he probably can swim. I get there, I jump over the thing, the fish hits me immediately because the controls are not very good. Yeah. Go into the water, dead. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, they the human do that. that doesn't work. No. So the other thing is, so the human can also, if you hold the button down, you can charge up, and he'll shoot a beam of energy out, yeah. which I didn't even know like was a thing, but you can do that. So you hold the thing down, and he charges up, and he shoots a beam of energy out. So I'm like, okay, here's what I want to do. I'm going to shoot the beam of energy. So when the fish comes up, so you jump. shoot the beam yeah. of energy, try that shit. But it's too fast. The It's that you can't trigger it out because the fish is too far away. The fish is all the way over there. You have to be like this far away for the fish to pop up. Yeah. So you can't do that either. You know what's awesome? Being an all-powerful magic werewolf warrior and not being able to fight a fucking fish. And the fa- a fucking fish kills you. That's so yeah. not good. So basically the point I'm trying to make is the platforming is not good on this stage at all. And I asked other people about it and they're like, yeah, this is like the hard, shitty part of the game. And a lot of people don't get by this part. So I'm not like alone with that. Anyway, so that that whole area sucks. And I'm sure if I did it enough over and over and over, I'd eventually could get through it. But it's like, I don't, I just, I would do it if I could keep continuing. I, I would just do it. But I, the fact that you get the five lives and then you got to go all the way at the beginning of the game. And then it takes me 25 minutes to get back to that stage. None of that. Um, yeah. I want to say that TMNT yeah. was much less bullshit. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'd rather play Team and Yeah. I got one more thing about Werewolf that I got to mention. So this game has bosses. The first uh, or the second boss or something looks kind of like Pyro from X Men. Oh wow. The werewolf himself has the arm blades. Yeah. Kind of like Wolverine's 
arm. Yo, blade. what if this game was supposed to be licensed and they? There's a boss, and he looks exactly like Juggernaut. No way. Exactly. Wow. Let's, please, let's show it on screen. Um, you keep going through the game, and you start. You're like, that's definitely Juggernaut. I wonder if. And then you get to the other boss, and he looks like Pyro, and you're playing as a guy that is like Wolverine. And then I didn't make it there yet, but the end of the game, the end boss of Werewolf: The Last Warrior, Magneto, is, is straight up Magneto. Yeah, it's Magneto. <laughs> That's the wow. boss of the game. Yeah. You fight Matt fucking Magneto yeah, at the funny. end. So, like, that's what he looks like, the whole thing. And he throws, by the way, he throw in Werewolf, he, like, summons metal and throws metal beams and shit at you. That's, wow. like, what it is. That's awesome. So the people that made this game were like, we want to make x-men game and they're like we don't we'll try to get it was probably like we'll try to get the license we can't get the license oh oh there's already an x-men game you can't now it's the werewolf game and they're like we're gonna keep it the way it is fuck you and they didn't change it yeah yeah so werewolf last warrior versus ljn wolverine where you have to like hit select for the claws to come out which game would you rather play this th- I'll say this much for Werewolf. Um, it has that NES badness that makes me want to keep coming back. Some games do that, yeah. where it's like it's bad, but I, I'll keep playing it to try to get through it. But there's yeah. other NES games that I just fucking hate, and I don't want to. I just don't want to play it. Yeah. Um, like like um, uh, Skate or Die. I don't have any interest in playing that game. I think it's bad, and I don't want to play it. It's not good. Not it's good. Not good. And there's certain there's certain NES games yeah. that are like that. They're like you're never gonna see me stream a certain batch of games because I just I don't like them, even in a bad, funny way. You Wolverine know? pisses me off because Wolverine's fucking claws shouldn't be so shitty. They're they're real bad. It's yeah. like oh, you gotta hit select and you have a bar and all this. It's like I was trying to play a bunch of the X Men games. Um, there's yeah. like X Men Mutant Apocalypse on Super Nintendo, yeah. and there's that's not so bad. There's a it's really it's not so bad, it's but it's hard. like really hard. But it's the thing about it is you'd probably like it better than me because you're like more of a fighting game guy. It's like um, there's like like a lot of like hot dukins. It's like hot dukins and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'm not like that's not for me. Yeah, I like Gambit in that. Yeah, there's a Genesis. There's an X Men game on Genesis as well, and it's kind of just called X Men. It's kind of crap. There's X Men, and then X Men Two. There's Clone uh, Wars. Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. all that. Yeah, X Men. That game was so fucking popular. Everybody had X Men. The X Men game. I want to. The only one I really like is the arcade. I like that arcade game. We don't. We don't talk about this on. You know, collectors and things don't talk about how popular that fucking X Men game was on Genesis. Yeah. You know, everybody's like Echo the Dolphin. Well, I'll tell you, every single person who had Echo the Dolphin had X-Men. Too. Everybody had X-Men. Everybody had it. Yeah. Yeah. I would go over, I didn't have it back in the day, the Genesis, but I, I had a bunch of friends that, that's one of the reasons I didn't have the Genesis, because every one of my friends back then had a Genesis. Yeah. That was the console I would go over somebody's house, because I knew they had it. All my right. friends had the Genesis, so I was like, I'll just go play it at my friend's house. And the, and the thing about X-Men the funnest part of X Men is you just get Nightcrawler. You try to like warp ahead in the level, yeah, because he can like teleport through walls, yeah. Or you like, you know, yeah. I, lo- I Nightcrawler is like my favorite. Yeah, he's cool. What, regardless, uh, th- that yeah, you can teleport in the X Men Genesis game, but you can tell I would always be him in the arcade game because like if you're Wolverine. And you use the thing. His attack just like goes, it goes forward. Straight. Nightcrawler's like going all over the place. He kills everything on the screen. Yeah, it's. I feel like he's the best one. I don't know. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's good in it. Um, I've been playing as Dazzler lately. How's her, Dazzler? Because she's got the bomb that's kind of like Nightcrawler's, and that it expands out. Expands. Yeah. Yeah. I that's mean, better than Wolverine. You probably want probably like if you had to rank them, it's probably Nightcrawler, uh, Colossus. Yeah. And then maybe Dazzler. But like Storm and Wolverine and you don't want that. Cyclops is like bad. Yeah, poor Cyclops. He always gets fucked over, doesn't he? Yeah. Most people don't like Cyclops. Yeah, because he's like freaking Boy Scout. Like, yeah, that's why he's like. That's great. He's kind of like that's the same feeling I get with like Leonardo. Yeah. He's like the goody Ooh, goody. Yeah. Nobody wants the goody Nobody but goody. Because like 
Wolverine's like Raphael. Yeah. If you're going to make the equivalent. Yeah. You know, you want like the badass you right. know, guy. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem with all with those kind of characters. It's like nobody wants to be yeah. the goody two shoes. Yeah. But anyway, that is this week's episode of Talk About Games. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I personally would recommend more so uh, Ryan's game this week. I, I'd rather play that. Although yeah. I have to say, like both of these games, neither one are they're my not fa- awesome. Like we, we both kind of brought mediocre yeah, games this like week. A- <laughs> So here's our mediocre games. Enjoy anyway, this. Um, guys, also, one last thing. Uh, if you like this show, go on over to Apple Music and leave us a review because it helps the uh, show out when we get reviews and ratings. I think there's star ratings and all that. So, and, and also, I know that a lot of you guys have already done that, and we appreciate that very much. But if you're uh, one of the people that haven't, if you get the opportunity, please do that because it would help us out greatly. Thank you. And it's also awesome to like and subscribe on YouTube. I'm sure you've never heard that before from anyone on the platform. Click the bell. <laughs> Click it. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Have Thanks a good one, watching. guys. Bye. We are waiting for the dark souls of fighting games. Let us have it. We're ready. <laughs> Soul Edge has nothing on a lightsaber. Like, I'm sorry. James Earl Jones comes back. No. no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think kids trade games yeah. anymore. I need that sense of accomplishment and it wasn't there. And I think that that was a major flaw. The way they engineer these is just phenomenal. As much as you're into like the comics, I was very into the toys. So I was on like the message board all yeah. the time. Yeah.